Okay, welcome to System Devices 1. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at this year's open assessment and talk through each of the questions. Okay, so this, uh, okay, the assessment is a continuation of Practical 9, Lab 9, uh, but do make sure you download the assembler and the ISC project from the exam folder. There are some small differences, but basically it's the same system. So there are four questions based around this system. Uh, you can modify this system uh, to improve its functionality, but there are some limitations on what you can change as defined here. So what that means is that you can't alter the top level schematic. So the basic architecture has to remain the same. You can't add more memories and uh, other kind of processes to your systems. Also the top level schematic of the processor has to remain the same, but you can alter some of its components. So you can in alter the internals of the control logic or the ALU to allow you to add new instructions. So if you looked inside the ALU, you can see that we have some spare inputs. So if you wanted to add new instructions, uh, the functional units associated with those could be bolted on uh, to these uh, spare inputs, replacing the constant zeros that there are at the moment. The instructions you can add are defined in Appendix A. So you can see some of these instructions are labeled not implemented. So do for free to add any of these instructions if you feel they'll be useful to your solutions. There are also two undefined instructions that you can add, XOP1 and XOP2. So XOP1 is an undefined function, but it's an immediate addressing mode. And XOP2, again, is an undefined function, uh, uh, registered addressing mode. So do make sure your solutions comply to these restrictions. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'll have to mark them as a zero mark. So your submissions will be uploaded via the electronic submission system. Uh, so what you need to do is create a single zip file. So create four folders labeled Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And within each of those folders, obviously place the files associated with those questions. Zip them all up into a single file and then upload that into the submission system. Remember, every time you upload a file, it will overwrite the previous one. So do not upload separate files for question one, two, three, or four, uh, because obviously you will delete the previous question. And I will not be able to mark those. So please, zip up everything into one file and submit that one file. Question one is a bookwork question, so a bit of a banker question to get you started. Uh, so what we have is a new jump instruction, a new conditional jump. So what I would like you to do is have a look at that instruction, uh, write out its RTL description for its fetch, decode and execute phases, list those micro instructions, give me a brief description of what hardware components are used in its implementation and its basic operation. Submit those descriptions in a plain text file called jumpc.txt. Again, do make sure you're complying to the submission criteria. I do want a plain text file, not a PDF, not a docx, just a plain text file for compatibility reasons. Question two is your first programming problem. So what you'll have in loaded up into memory at base address 1024 is a picture of Bob. Uh, so what you need to do is draw a red cross in that image to indicate to the center of that image. The pixels within this image are represented again using that packed RGB format, uh, same as lab nine, uh, and as automatic load into memory uh, using the RAM simulation model. So you'll be modifying the image loaded in at address 1024. So you will not be copying an image, don't create a new image, you just, you'll only be editing that original image. Uh, so therefore to dump that image out to the disk when you're finished editing it, again, you write to address FFF, uh, which will trigger the, the RAM simulation model to write out the PPM uh, image to the file output.ppm. However, do make sure you configure the RAM uh, simulation model to do that. So what that means, uh, and this is described in lab nine, you need to push into the RAM simulation model. So if you push into that one and you can see the various configurations uh, listed here. So you can see the parameters associated with saving a PPM image, so the, the color image stored in memory, are controlled by these block of parameters here. So you can see it's enabled, uh, but you'll need to modify obviously the base address uh, to the address where the image is stored and uh, for us for that question that would be 1024 and again the rest of the parameters will remain the same so the image is the same 24 by 24 and the output image containing that red cross will be written to the file output.ppm also do remember that the ram simulation model will only load the bug image into its memory if it's in the xilinx working directory so you do have to copy across the bug 24 times 24.ppm image into your xilinx working directory for it to be loaded into memory at that base address 1024 and again that's specified in the configuration parameters in your ram simulation model so marks are awarded for functionality drawing that red cross within the image and also for timing of processing performance so you need to write a program that is capable of drawing that red cross in less than 2.5 microseconds. If your program takes longer than that, then you'll get zero marks for the processing performance, but you would still score marks for the functionality if you were able to draw the cross in the right place. So within the Q2 folder, you need to add a plain text file containing your assembly language programs uh, named markcenter.asm. 
Uh, a plain text file containing any macros that I have used. You don't have to use any macros, but if you do, uh, you're allowed to submit one macro file. Any schematics that you have modified, uh, the ALU, for example, or any schematics that you've added uh, and their associated symbols. If you have uh, added any instructions, you will also need to upload the decoder.vhd file. As I say, do make sure you do upload plain text files, or obviously the files that you pass to your Python program. If you upload anything else, obviously I won't be able to pass them to the Python program, so I will not be able to generate to the machine code, uh, so I'm afraid I'll have to award you a zero mark. Question three is another programming problem. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at encryption. So we're trying to encrypt our image of Bob uh, using a very simple block cipher. That cipher is implemented in two parts. The first part we do is swap nibbles. So for each byte within the 16 bits that represents our pixel, we swap their nibbles over. So we've got a high nibble and a low nibble. So you can see here the high nibble is these four bits here, and that has shifted to the low nibble of the high byte, as indicated by that arrow. And the low nibble of the high byte is shifted to the high nibble of the high byte, if that's not confusing. And exactly the same for the low byte. So here we have our low byte, bit 0 to 7. Uh, the high nibble is shifted to the low nibble position, and the low nibble is shifted to the high nibble position. We then invert those shifted nibbles uh, using a subtraction and rewrite that pixel back to the original image. Uh, again, we are updating that original source image stored at base 1024. When you are finished updating all the pixels within that base image, uh, write to address FFF again to trigger the dump pin on our simulation model. And again, that will write out that encrypted image uh, to the file output.ppm. Again, make sure the save parameters are correct as for question two. So you write out the base image starting at address 1024. To test if your encryption algorithm is working correctly, I have given you a Python program to decrypt your image. So the encrypted image output.ppm can be passed to the decrypt uh, Python file, run that through there, and that will generate a new image uh, .ppm, which obviously will be the same as the original image, bug 24 by 24. Again, you will get marks for functionality and processing performance. To get marks for processing performance, your code must be quicker than 15 milliseconds. However, to get full marks, you have to process this image in less than or equal to 1.22 milliseconds. So to implement a software only solution, you shouldn't have to add any new instructions. But if you want to get to this faster processing performance, then you'll have to add new instructions to allow you to process that image using less instructions. So for the submission for this question, you have to submit a plain text file, uh, encrypt.asm, uh, which is your assembly language program. You can also, again, upload a single macro file if you have used macros. Any schematics that you have altered or new schematics and their associated symbols. And if you added any new instructions, the decoder.vhd file. Finally, question four is an optimization problem. So I give you the code and you have to make it run faster. So the problem we need to solve is to convert our color image into a grayscale image, as described by this pseudocode here. So for more information about this program, uh, have a look at this web page. So again, this web page will take you through how the simple CPU represents images. Uh, it will talk about the PPM image format, the packed RGB format there, and also things that we need to consider when we're processing that data. So do have a read through this one. Have a look at that Python program that converts a color image into our grayscale image. Have a look at what's going on there. Think about what instructions you need within the program and the data values that they represent. Uh, again, there's some examples here of how we can add additional instructions to our, our processor. So we perhaps want to add a arithmetic shift left instruction. So look at the hardware associated with that or a bitwise or instruction. Uh, in this case, an immediate bitwise or instruction. Then we have some discussion about macros and how they perhaps they could be used in our program. Remember, you're only allowed one macro file here. So here, this discussion here is based around having two macro files and a two-pass assembler, which you're not allowed for the open assessment. But you may be able to take some inspiration from how this is done here. Finally, we have our base program. So this is a program that you need to optimize. So have a look at that program. See if you can understand how it operates and then think about how can I improve its processing performance? How can I make that program run more quickly? And as a general rule of thumb uh, for our simple CPU, that means less instructions. So how can I reduce the number of instructions that are executed? And I think that's where I'll finish there before I say too much and tell you the solution. So again, when if you run your simple CPU program, um, it will take in that bug 24 times 24 image uh, that you've copied into your Xilinx working directory, and it will generate a PGM image, a, a grayscale image. So output.pgm, not ppm. Again, there may be some variations about the system discussed here and the one we're using for the open assessment. But what I want to try and get across here were the things that you need to consider. So have a look through this one and consider how I can improve the processing performance of the system we're using uh, for this open assessment.
Okay, back to the question. So again, a little bit of discussion about how we all do this process. So how do we convert from a color image to a grayscale image? You can use different algorithms, that's all fine, uh, but they have to be comparable to the one on the VLE. So look in the exams folder on the VLE, you'll see an image file output.pgm. Remember that's a text file, so you can open that one there and compare it to the text file generated through remote simulation. And as long as the pixel values are within plus or minus 10% of each other, then whatever algorithm you use, that's perfectly fine. So again, a key point to note here, you must generate a PGM output file. You must generate a grayscale image. Uh, and that image format uses two pixels values per memory location, rather than just the one for a PPM image format. Unfortunately, if your solution is based around a PPM image format, uh, that, that color image format, I'm afraid that you will get a zero mark. It must use the PGM format. In this question, we will be generating a separate image. So you'll have your base image at address 1024. Uh, and you will generate your PGM, your grayscale image at address 1600 onwards. That's described in the pseudo code here. So there's your base address for the color image, and there's your output uh, base address for the grayscale image. Again, your RAM simulation model will dump that out to uh, the output files. So output.pgm, again, that is specified using those configuration parameters in your uh, simulation model. So if you go back and look at that simulation model, so there's our RAM simulation model there. So if you look inside that one, you'll see uh, we've got the save PGM image options down here. So make sure that is set to true. Make sure that is set to the right base address, obviously 1600 for, our, for question four, and the rest of the parameters are the same. Okay, uh, again, marks are awarded based on functionality and processing performance. So the base solution that you're given on that web page, you will need to make some tweaks. Uh, that one is based around using two macro files, and obviously you're only allowed one. And also you need to consider the processing performance. Again, to get the processing performance, you must be able to process an image in at least uh, 225 milliseconds. But to get the full marks, you need to process an image in less than 1.82 milliseconds. Your submission, uh, where you have to submit uh, the assembly language program in a plain text file, uh, grayscale.asm and if you're using macros one macro file not two just the one macro file uh, simple cpu version 1d.m4 again plain text file as always you need to also submit any schematics you've modified any new schematics and new symbols and if you had any new instructions the decoder.phd file okay i think that's where i'll leave that one there if you do have any more questions regarding the open assessment as always do email me and i will post responses on the vle's